Hello and welcome to the next video in the Ardu Copter Pixhawk Mission Planner build. Now this is kind of where we're up to. We have the reference frame built, we have our Pixhawk installed, everything is all wired up. It just uh, for me to charge the battery. Uh, this is the battery that I'm using with it. Uh, pop that underneath and then go out and do the test flight and that's what this video is all about. Links below to the rest of the series if you'd like to watch how to put this together. This is an up-to-date series on how to uh, configure something like a multi-rotor. However, it doesn't just apply to things like the Pixhawk Cube. Any technology, things like the Durandal or the non-Pixhawk variants that run Arducopter, the process is exactly the same. Now the Maiden is a really important first flight. Uh, we've already tested on the bench that we can arm this thing and that the motors run and that the motors are in the right place and they're turning in the right direction. So we should be in a good place to actually be able to get this thing to the field and to take it off. Now there are a couple of things that I would recommend before you put this stuff into the back of your car or whatever it is and take it to the field to give it a try. The first is that go over and make sure that all the bolts and connections are nice and secure. Do make sure that you can arm it on the bench. Make sure the props are off for that bit and make sure that you can start the motors running. The compass calibration that you've done inside the house while we were setting it up is going to be fine. But to be honest, I would redo it at the field. So take your tablet with you and plug it in. There is also a stick combination. I'll put a link to the documentation. If you hold the sticks in that position, it will initiate another compass calibration and it's worthwhile doing that at the field before you fly. The flight modes that I'm going to use for the Maiden are the same as I use for all of the initial Maidens for Arducopter. I'd recommend that you have the stabilize mode. Stabilize mode is just going to use the accelerometers and the gyros inside the Pixhawk to keep it nice and level. You're going to have to control the throttle yourself but it's going to allow you to lift off and that very basic test uh, means that you know that you've always got the stabilized function or flight mode to go back to if you try one of the further modes and something horrible starts to happen. I go from stabilize into altitude hold. Now the barometer and the other sensors inside here then start to be used alongside the, the accelerometer and gyro that we tested in stabilized so they're added on and then that hopefully will keep its height. It won't be exactly locked in the sky. It will drift about a little bit. If you add sensors like LiDAR and sonar to the bottom of the vehicle, then that becomes a lot more accurate. And I could potentially cover those in the intermediate part of this series. Once I'm happy that that works, then I will fly a little bit further away and then I'll initiate a GPS or a navigation hold. That then should lock it as close as it can in the sky and it's not just kind of sit there. This is kind of really handy if you're doing kind of filming. And that's going to use all the previous sensors that we've already done in stabilize, altitude hold. And it's also going to initiate and use the GPS and it should just sit there. And then once I'm happy that that works and I can kind of fly it around and just kind of park it in 3D space, then I'm going to initiate return to home. It should then come back to me, land in front of me and then power off the motors and disarm. If any of those things that I'm about to do don't work properly, I'm going to immediately flick it back into stabilize mode because that is the one that uses the least amount of sensors and that's the one that hopefully is going to work the best. So let's go to the field and I'll talk you through the first ever flight of this new quad. Okay, so here we are at the field, a pretty quiet day. I'm going to use this hole, whatever it is, as the kind of marker for the home station. Uh, I'm going to have to set up the GPS and we're going to have to turn on the radio. Now, again, we're going to start in stabilized mode um, just to make sure that the basic flight is all working. And then we're going to build on all of those. Now I'm cheating a little bit here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm using the Yapu script on here. I'll put a link in the description so you can see how to set it up. Uh, this will show me when 3D locks and things are uh, all there. So plug the GPS and the Pixhawk in. And then what we're doing is we're kind of waiting for the initialization to be complete and waiting for telemetry to come along. GPS 3D stick lock. Stabilize flight mode. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, while it's just finishing getting ready, uh, it has a 3D lock. We can see the green flashing lights on it. That's a good sign. Uh, we're gonna start off in stabilize mode and I'm gonna take it off and hover it at about head height. Now, the reason for that is uh, you wanna be out of ground effect just to see how it's performing and you're gonna be manually controlling the throttle. Now, the danger with that, of course, is that if you put the throttle high, it's gonna whiz up into the air. Um, with some of the other modes, it's gonna be that when the... GPS home acquired, we're ready. When it's in the middle position, like in altitude hold that we're gonna test in a minute, it's gonna hover. Now to arm the quad, we need to hold the stick throttle low position, rudder right, for a couple of seconds it's gonna arm. And when it does, I need to take off quite quickly because if I don't, it will disarm as a safety feature. So let's hold that to the right. Motor's armed. And we're gonna take it off into the air. Don't be scared of it if it starts to lift up. So that all looks pretty good. I'm going to step back a little bit because um, I want to so you can see it, but I don't want to get hit by it if something goes wrong. I'm going to put it into altitude hold mode and put the sticks at 50%. Now that should manage its own height. However, it's going to wander around a little bit. Now, the way altitude hold works, if I raise the throttle, it'll rise in the air. If I put the throttle back at 50%, it'll keep that uh, position. Let's take it away from us a little bit more again. It's wandered a bit close for my liking. Okay, next job then. We're going to try GPS loiter. So loiter should now essentially have parked it in position. Stick at 50% to say we want to keep the same altitude and it's going to use the GPS to try and stay in that position and it's doing a really nice job. Again, every single time I'm testing one of these new modes, I'm ready to put it back into stabilize if something horrible happens. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to try a return to home. So let's fly a little bit further away. Just park it over there maybe. That looks pretty good. And let's hit my return to, home. return to home. So it's gonna rise to the predefined altitude in Mission Planner, and then it's going to come back. So this looks good. So the compass and everything is working. I'm just backing off in case it makes a mess of this. Nope, pretty good. It's gonna loiter or hover above the home location, and then it's gonna start gently descending. Now, I'm not touching anything on this. This is a return to launch. This is also what would happen in the event of a failsafe. So it's going to gently bring itself down to the ground. It's a couple of meters away from home location, but that's pretty typical unless you're using one of the RTK uh, GPSs, which are very expensive. It'll hit the ground, disarm, and there we go. So it is down, it is safe, it's disarmed. So we started off from here. Uh, which is this little hole in the ground. So we're about, about seven feet away, but that's not bad. So that is a successful test flight. Everything works. We know the main flight modes work. I think that is good. Let's go back to the bench to finish off the video. So there we are, it flew and it flew very well, but that's because this is a reference frame. I've already loaded um, the tuning for it, which is pretty close. If I hadn't had access to that tuning, and actually I might still do it on here, I'd recommend going through an auto-tune cycle. Uh, again, I'll put links in the description below. Auto-tune will allow the Pixhawk and the Ardu Pilot technology to actually, it'll flick and roll it around and eventually it'll get it a little bit closer. Still not as good as a manual tune in my humble opinion, but it'll get it very, very close indeed. The big trick with a maiden flight is not to try too much and to make sure that before you add anything else like your cameras and your FPV and your gimbals or whatever it is you want to add to something like this, that it works okay in this specific setup. That way, if you add things later on and it starts to misbehave or doesn't fly very well, you have a very good idea of what the cause is. So the last video in this beginner's part of the series 
is going to be the frequently asked question. I'm going to collect all of the great comments that I've had through this beginner's part of the Ardicopter build, put them together and answer them in the next video. And then after that, we can start doing extra things, talk about adding FPV, additional sensors, mission planner tips, and all of that goodness as well. Again, in the meantime, you can also check out the big boys toys playlist again links below that has an awful lot of cool things you can do with this kind of technology and mission planner so i'll see you next time where we'll do the faq thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end if you want to find out what i'm currently working on you can follow me on social media by searching for painless 360 in the usual places if you'd like to become part of the inner circle then you can become a patreon details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.